Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now in today's tutorial we're going to be learning how to crouch and of course crawl with our character. Now this is actually very very simple and at the same time it seems very very complex but uh, we're going to get right on into it. Now there's a couple things that you may have noticed that are different. Of course we have a brand new character and the reason for this was because well, I had a little bit of complications using the other character and its uh, setup. So I went ahead and just switched up characters and as you can see, I'm actually quite satisfied with it. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, to begin with, what we want to be able to do is first talk about how we set up the animator controller. Now, the animator controller is probably one of the most important parts of setting this up in the first place. So the first thing we're going to cover is of course the parameter. Now the parameter that we're going to be using is a float called stance. If you don't have this um, parameter you just need to press this plus key, go over to float, and then of course just type in the name. Make sure that these are actually spelt exactly the way that I have them spelt, otherwise the script won't work. Okay, so what we have with stance, uh, the reason why we actually have it set as a float value is because we want to be able to implement how many different steps we have between standing, crouching, and crawling. If we're standing, we want the stance value to equal 1. If we're crouch crouching, uh, we want that to equal 0.5. And if we're crawling, we want it to equal 0. So over here, uh, we had our basic motion um, blend tree right so if you remember what we first set up uh, our animation and all we had this uh, base motion um, that gave us our walking our running our uh, strafing all that sort of stuff right and it, it looked like this uh, of course it was set to 2d freeform directional which is super easy and fun to play with if you did not set that up inside the prior tutorial make sure to go back and actually do that now, if we head over to our base layer again, uh, you're going to notice that we have two other uh, blend trees right here. Now, these blend trees are actually copies of this one right here. So all I did was really just duplicate this by pressing Control D. And then from there, I just simply went inside here, erased the animations I didn't need. Say, for instance, whenever we're actually crouching and crawling, we're not actually moving at full speed. Like, we're not actually running. So you could actually delete all the values that are set to one. So say for instance where it says stand, you could just simply select that and then press this minus key, right? So you could do like that. If you wanted to take a look at where it says running backwards and all, you could just simply select it, then delete that. If you wanted to be able to go with your strafes, you do the same thing and there we go. So your crouching and crawling should look similar to this right here. So all it was is simply copying the original um, base layer, so the motion layer, and then just simply erasing all the one values for your, for your crouching and crawling. Now, you will need to replace the animations, obviously. Um, you don't want to be standing whenever you're crouching and crawling. So just make sure that you do get those animations. I got mine from Mixamo. Uh, and of course, I put them right here. As you can see, I got all these different animations. Uh, they're really fun to play with, like I said. Um, but just make sure that you get those animations and then you drag and drop them in here. Once you have your crouch set up, say for instance if I select this and I named it crouch, you can then just simply duplicate that and then just call that crawl. So that's all it really is, is just simply the same blend tree just without the one value. So we're going to erase that. And the next thing that's very important to this particular setup is being able to get your transition set up properly. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, address our jump function. So whenever we jump, we want to be able to determine, um, of course, how we land, why we're landing inside that specific animation pose. Uh, so our first pose from jump to standing, if we actually select this, uh, you're going to see 
that we have two conditions met. So if we're falling is equal to false, right? So that's what happened when we, when we set this up in the first place, right? So we, of course, made that transition, hooked it up, and we just simply said, okay, if we're falling is equal to false, great. But then we have to decide what stance we're standing in. Now, unfortunately, Unity does not have a standard for equal then when it comes down to parameters. Um, so what we have to do is we got to play around with this. So what we say is if our stance is greater than 0 0.5, which means if we're not crouching, then we're going to go into standing. So whenever we hop, even if we're crawling, um, we're going to go immediately into the standing pose. Now, on the off chance, on the other hand, if we actually make this transition, so make transition to crouching, uh, you'll want to actually add in these values. So make sure it has exit time is off. And you're going to check your stance. So you're going to notice we have two different stance values here. We also need to select that and select as falling. So actually, we have three conditions here. So the first condition is going to be a stance value. The second condition is going to be a stance value. And the third is if is falling is equal to false. So what this is going to do is we're going to, of course, say if our stance is greater than zero and if our stance is less than one. So what we're checking to is to make sure that we're not crawling, but at the same time, we're not standing. So th that's all that's doing right there. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the transition from standing to crouching. So make sure to make that transition to crouching. And here, all you're going to do is pretty much do the same thing you did here. So you're going to check if our stance is less than one, but if it's greater than zero. And make sure, of course, has exit times off. And just like before, it's basically just checking, okay, so 0 0.5 is the value of our crouching. Well, 1 is the value of our standing, and 0 is the value of if we're crawling. So we're checking to make sure we're not crawling. We're checking to make sure we're not standing. And the only value in between is crouching. And, of course, if we head back, you're going to notice that we can just simply use one value if our stance is greater than 0 0.5. So if we're not crouching and it's over crouching, then we're going to be standing. Of course, has exit times off. So let's head over here to crawling. Now, obviously, if we make our transition from crawling to standing, we're going to be using the same value. So if our stance is greater than 0 0.5, same thing as before, we're going to go over to standing. And of course, if we go from standing to crawling, you're going to notice that we have if our stance is less than 0 0.5. And as I explained just before, it's just using that same value. So it's just going to say if we're crawling, you know, we're going to do that. Here we have a pretty similar setup. It's just pretty much copying these right here. From crawling to crouching, stance is less than one, stance is greater than zero, uh, you know, fun stuff. And of course, heading from crouching to crawling, you're going to point if our stance is less than 0 0.5. Now, like I said, that is a very important setup. Make sure that you do get that right because if you don't get this part right, then it can mess up the entire system. So, okay, time for the fun stuff. So I'm going to open up the script real fast. Sorry about that. And we have a couple new variables that we're going to be discussing here. So the first thing we have, of course, we created two new speed values. So if you remember from our last couple tutorials, we created this speed settings header, right? Uh, so right above our walk and run speed, which we pri prior, previously, whatever that is, that we had, uh, we're going to be putting two new values. So we have crawl speed and crouch speed. Pretty self-explanatory. I probably don't need to explain that too much. So just make sure that you add those in there. You will need to set these values inside the inspector, so just keep that in mind. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a private float called stance, which is equal to 1. Uh, we automatically set our stance to equal standing. Uh, you can make this a public float and then, of course, adjust it to your liking. But I personally like the idea that we're standing starting off. 
Uh, we also have crawl time is equal to 0 0.5. So this is the amount of time it takes to actually go into your crawl pose. Uh, this is another value that you could turn into a public float if you want to test it while actually running the game. I just personally like keeping it private. Uh, so that's just my personal opinion. You can do whatever you want with it, but yeah. And then, of course, we have hold time. So hold time is going to be our counter. It's going to say, okay, so once you press this button down, it's going to start calculating how much time is being pressed. And we'll get more into that in a second. So just make sure that you get those values in there. And then, of course, the last variable that we added is a bool called is checking stance. So the cool part about this Boolean is that we're going to only check our stance whenever we press a button down. And we're not going to check it any other time. That way it doesn't double check it. Uh, I ran into that problem and it was such a pain. All right, so once you got the variables set up, uh, you're going to go over here to the input uh, settings underneath your avoid update. And we're going to pretty much add a, this little sprint adjustment. So if you remember from the last time uh, we did this, we pretty much designed this sprint function to change this from speed is equal to run speed and then of course otherwise it's going to be equal to walk speed well as you can see there's a big difference here so we simply call right here if input dot get button sprint so if you were following along in a previous couple of tutorials you will have already gotten this uh, button set up or input set up and we're going to simply ask a question. We're going to say, if our stance is not equal to one, so if we're not equal to one, if we're not standing, then we're going to change our stance from its current position. So we're going to be lerping this value. Um, and then we're going to move it to the value of one. So if we're crawling, we're going to move it to the value of one, which means zero to one. If we're crouching, we're going to move it to standing, right? So it's going to be from a value of 0 0.5 to one. Then we have, of course, how much time it's going to take. Now this is how fast your character is actually going to change their position. Now you could multiply this by time, not delta time. I just found that that made it very, very choppy and it just didn't look great. So I multiplied this by a zero point or point zero five. And then of course we have changed our speed value. So speed is equal to run speed. Yeah, pr pretty simple. Okay, the next thing we would do is we're going to ask a question as well. So we're going to say else, which means we're going to check this first. If it's not happening, we're going to check this statement right here. And then, of course, it's going to continue down. So we're going to say else if our stance is equal to one. So if we're standing and our speed is, or basically we're going to say our speed is equal to walk speed. So if we're standing, our speed is equal to walk speed. Um, otherwise, so else if our stance is equal to 0 0.5. Five, that means that we're crouching speed is equal to crouch speed else if our stance is equal to zero then our speed is now going to be equal to our crawl speed so all we're doing is we're just changing the value of our speed based on our stance so that's pretty cool okay so for the meat of this uh, tutorial right here here's the most important part is actually allowing us to crouch. So we're going to first ask a question. If we get our button down called crouch. Now I'm assuming that you don't have this button so head back over into Unity. Make sure to open up your project settings. If you don't have that panel go over to edit, project settings, find the input and all you're going to do is you're going to add a new size value. So let's go and do that. Once it decides to load up there we go. And once you add that size value, you're going to rename it to crouch. And of course, give it a positive button, alt positive button, whatever you want. Make sure that it is a key or mouse button. I, of course, use left control. And yeah, so we're going to head back over here. So whenever we press this button down, we're going to say is checking stance is equal to true. Right. So that means that we're now actually checking the stance. Then we're going to say input get button crouch. So we're going to get the same button. So if the button is pressed, then we're going to also check if we're checking our stance. 
so I was only going to check once. Now what happens here is really cool. So we're going to take our hold time. Remember how we had that variable with no value? We're going to add time dot delta time every single second. So hold time plus equals time dot delta time. So every single frame rate, 32 frames per second. No, I, I think it's about 16 frames. No, we're going to say 32 frames frame per, per second. So let's just say a 0.32 frames per second. It's going to be increasing every single second. I think I could be wrong, but we'll see. All right. Um, then, of course, we have right here another question, right? So if our hold time, so this current time, is greater than or equal to a crawl time, right? So if it's equal to, greater than or equal to 0 0.5, I think. Let me double check. Yeah, 0 0.5. So if it's greater than or equal to 0 0.5, then we're going to go and check if we are not crawling. So if our stance is not equal to zero, which means we're not crawling, then we're going to allow ourselves to crawl by saying our stance is equal to zero. Our hold time is equal to zero. And we're going to make sure that our is checking stance is equal to false. This way we're no longer able to actually check our stance. Otherwise, so here's our else statement. We're going to make sure that we stand. So if we're crawling and we hold down the left control button, we're going to automatically stand up. Uh, so that's why we have that. So stance is equal to 1, hold time is equal to 0, and is checking stance is equal to false. Now you may ask, why are we actually setting this hold time equal to 0? So the reason why we do this is because we want this to reset. Uh, when we release this button. And that's sort of the reason why we have hold time equal to zero like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that up real fast. And yeah. All right, so now we need to determine if we get our button up. So as you can see right here, we have another one. So we have our button down right here, our button pressed right here. And then we have our button up right here. So we're going to be checking if we're crouching or if we press the button crouch. And of course, if we're still checking our stance. Now keep in mind, whenever we hold this button and it exceeds this time, we're no longer going to be checking our stance, which means when we release this button, so when we get our button up, it's not going to run this right here at all because it's already run this value right here. And, of course, it disabled is checking stance. So that's the reason why we have that value there. All right, so we've run the same thing as before. So if stance is not equal to crouch, so 0 0.5, then we're going to change our stance to equal 0 0.5, and we're going to set our hold time is equal to 0. So it's, we're going to reset that value anyway. Otherwise, we're going to set our stance to equal 1, and we're going to set our hold time equal to 0. Now you may wonder, why do we have this is checking stance at the bottom instead of as per we had over here in the middle? And the reason why we have it there, uh, I guess, where is it? And the reason why we have it here is because we don't have any underlying condition here, which means we can run this immediately since this is a one-time event. So we're going to be activating that making sure we can no longer press any of these buttons till we press the crouch button again. So that's cool. All right, I know that was a lot of information. Now time for the animation part. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna close those. We're gonna go over to our animation. Yeah, right here. So this is the magic of it all. This is the only value that we're actually changing right here inside our animation. We're going to get our animator. We're going to set its float. Stance is equal to stance. Yeah, I know. Super complex, isn't it? But the cool part about that is that since we set up all these values inside of our inputs to be able to change stuff from here, I know, rather complex, we only have to change one value in our animator to be able to actually change our animation. So. 
Make sure that you do get this one right here, though. That's very, very important. So here we go. And then, of course, the last thing that we need to fix up is in our completed functions underneath the void jump function. So here, all we're going to do is we're going to check if our stance is not equal to 1 and our stance is not equal to 0 0.5, then our stance is equal to 1. Okay, so all this is doing is checking, okay, if we're crawling um, or crouching, or if we're just crawling, because if our value is equal to 0, then we're going to say our stance is equal to 1. I could have just said that in all honesty, but oh well, it'll work. Yeah, just uh, write that down and you're good. Okay, we're going to hit Control S. We're going to head back over into Unity. Select our game view. Let it load up, obviously, because it doesn't want to. And of course, we're going to hit play. So here we go. Fun stuff, peeps. All right, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and make sure everything's running properly. So if we look, boom, look, boom, we have our walk, we have our run, walking backwards, strafing, all that cool stuff. And of course, if we crouch, as you can see, we're able to do that. If we start running, oh, that's that's bad right there. So, what we need to do is make sure that whenever we start running, I am glad I tested this out before you guys had caught me. We need to also change our stance uh, value. So whenever we press the sprint button, we also need to um, make sure that we are transitioning. Let's see, where, where, where were we? If we're crouching and we start running. So we're going to set our transition value so stance value is equal to, now that should work, why Why didn't it work? <laughs> Sorry, I, I just had a thought right there. It's uh, hitting me. Okay, so let's see. We made sure that our stance is good, awesome, cool. And let's see. If our stance is not equal to one, then we're going to set our stance. I think that's the reason why I had it set to a 0.5. Okay. I think that's the reason why we actually had it set to that value. So I'm going to hit play one more time. Hopefully one more time. Otherwise, we're going to see what it's doing. Okay, so we're crouching, good, start running, okay, yeah. So that transition time, make sure that you do have it set to a high enough value for it to not go into decimal numbers that are really, really off. That's what I had before him, but now we're perfect. So, yeah, just make sure that you guys do do that. All right, so we're going to go into crouch. As you can see, we are crouching. Uh, our movement speed is slower, so that's good. And of course, if we go back up into crouch just by pressing it, we can. And if we go into run, yes, we are in business. Let's test our jump real fast. So we're going to go crouch, hop. Okay, good. And let's go into our crawl, hop. And awesome. So everything is working the way we want it to. Uh, so, yeah. All right, awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this enjoyed this tutorial if you didn't make sure to leave a like subscribe check out some of my other videos and of course if you have any questions uh, comments regarding this video make sure to leave those in the comment section below i'll be happy to get to those as soon as possible uh, make sure that you do by the way go into the uh, player make sure that you go over here into your speed settings and make sure that you do set those values uh, just want to make sure that you guys do do that because i've had some people that have not and well it's gotten interesting all right well i'll see you guys next time